Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. DTW, Revoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show Podcast, Hour 2. Hello there, it is Eric Erickson here. Welcome, how are you? The phone number is 877-973-7425, should you wish to be on the program. Uh, Look, we've got people on hold right now, and I need to tell all of you on hold, you're all listening to me, be patient with my call screener, he has a lot of balls in the air right now he's dealing with um he's on he's trying to process the call so just if you're on hold stay on hold please um i'll get to your phone calls uh so it it is the time of year i got stuff where i need to talk about stuff but i also have other stuff i need to talk about does that make any sense no it probably doesn't um but i want to talk about kevin mccarthy right now I want to explain to you why I think Republicans should defeat Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House, even if it means that the alternative is more rudderless and more moderate than Kevin McCarthy. Now, I need to say going into this, I don't know that they will do it. I I suspect McCarthy will be able to cut a deal. And McCarthy will be able to be speaker. I suspect that is so. It may come down to January 3rd when they're on the floor of the House at the new Congress and a floor vote and a floor fight. But I think the Republicans need to oust Kevin McCarthy as speaker. I want to explain to you why. Kevin McCarthy is a principleless, rudderless, spineless politician who has climbed the ladder by schmoozing and wooing people and changing his principles as needed to get there. And I particularly don't care for people like that. I would prefer a Speaker of the House who has some principles. If I am forced to choose between a principleless, moderate hack like McCarthy and someone else, I would rather go with someone else who has not climbed the ladder to get there and is at least being rewarded for having not tried to climb the ladder, but gets it through consensus. Here's the real bottom line issue for all of you. If Kevin McCarthy is beaten as speaker, it will probably be another moderate that I don't like. But taking out McCarthy shows that the conservatives in the House are willing to disrupt the status quo ante. They are willing to disrupt what exists. And that in and of itself gives them power they have not had. They're willing to take out McCarthy in a way others won't. It signals they do mean business. And there aren't enough moderates to align together when you have the progressives and the conservatives in the House of Representatives, it's going to force those moderate, principalist middlemen to pick a side. Are they going to go with AOC? Or are they going to go with the Republican conservatives? And if the Republicans have a majority, the overwhelming odds are they're going to go with the Republican conservatives. But even if they don't, I need you to understand this. 
for the last two years, K Street, the lobbyist community, they have all been convinced Kevin McCarthy would be Speaker of the House. So all of the major lobbying shops, the public interest groups, the super PACs, they've been hiring Kevin McCarthy staffers, Kevin McCarthy acolytes, and Kevin McCarthy sycophants, thinking he would be Speaker of the House. So you throw a wild card out there and Kevin McCarthy is no longer Speaker of the House, it's completely disruptive. It's disruptive to the lobbyists. It's disruptive to the special interest groups. It's disruptive to the public interest groups. It's disruptive to all of K Street. It's disruptive even to some of the conservative and Republican shops out there that have depended on the idea that Kevin McCarthy would be Speaker. And that is a good thing for the American taxpayer. It completely disrupts Washington because Washington has arranged the deck chairs on its sinking ship of state expecting McCarthy to be the new captain of the sinking ship. But it also would make the House of Representatives work because the speaker would be weak. You put in a weak Speaker of the House other than Kevin McCarthy, that's going to force the Republican leaders and the Democratic leaders to deal with their own parties and not the Speaker doing it. And that's a good thing. It would force the parties to exercise control and minimize the Speaker of the House. That would be a good thing. It would, in other words, force the members of Congress to legislate. And that's a good thing. They couldn't just go out and be pundits on Fox and MSNBC. They would have to do their work. Right now, because so much of the major legislation is drafted by the Speaker of the House, whether it was Paul Ryan or John Boehner or Nancy Pelosi, and is imposed on the members of Congress, they don't even get time to read it. The leadership says, trust me, and they rush it out. Members of Congress are supposed to be equal, and they're not, because the leadership takes a top-down approach, forces them to take up the legislation. They don't have time to read it. Leadership says, trust us and vote for this or else you'll lose your committee seat. By getting rid of that sort of speaker, by getting rid of Kevin McCarthy, it suddenly opens the door to Congress having to work again. It forces the congressmen to legislate. It forces them to have to work together. They can't just grandstand in committee investigations of Hunter Biden. They'll actually have to have that committee draft legislation. They'll have to actually do an appropriations process because a speaker won't be able to ram through another continuing resolution that just grows the rate of existing government without rethinking how government works. It would be good for the American taxpayer. It would be good for the American nation. It would be good for the country. It would be good for Congress itself because Congress doesn't have to do the work anymore. More. All Congress has to do is show up in Washington and work the cocktail circuit and the speaking circuit on the TV shows and then go home. They ask some tough questions of uh, bankers. They yell at them on TV. They're, they get their 15 seconds of fame and then they pack up and they go home. They don't have to do the real work. The leadership tells them how to vote. The leadership drafts the legislation. The leadership rushes the legislation through. The members of Congress don't have to do jack. In fact, at this point, the members of Congress, when you ask them, do the budget, they're like, we don't know how to do the budget. I mean, that's what the leadership does. We don't even budget anymore. We just do a continuing resolution. You get rid of Kevin McCarthy. It improves the whole situation in Washington, D.C. It becomes vastly disruptive. And that disruption in and of itself is a good thing.
I don't know that Kevin McCarthy is going to go down. But I think defeating Kevin McCarthy for the principle of defeating Kevin McCarthy is worth it, even if the next person is just as bad. Because it's an opportunity to destroy years and hundreds of millions of dollars invested by established donors, by K Street, by coattail riders, and all the favors people are owed by supporting him. The chairmanships, the PAC support, all of that, the chaos alone of defeating Kevin McCarthy makes it worth defeating Kevin McCarthy. It's necessary. Unless Kevin McCarthy is willing to make concessions he doesn't want to make, including requiring time for people to read all the legislation and ending the continuing resolutions and forcing through an appropriations process, and he's not going to do that. They need to get rid of Kevin McCarthy. And I know there are conservatives out there think, well, what if the next guy is worse than McCarthy? So what? Because McCarthy will eventually turn on you anyway. At least now you know what you'll get. McCarthy is only valuable to conservatives right now because he needs their votes to become speaker. The moment they're not valuable to him, the moment the number of Republicans grows in the House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy sees the conservatives as expendable. Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks she can cut a deal with Kevin McCarthy. She can in a 222-seat house. The moment he gets to 240, she becomes expendable. So get rid of him now, and none of you are expendable. Kevin McCarthy should be defeated for pure principle's sake. There's been an entire machine that has led to this moment of him becoming speaker. You defeat McCarthy, you break up that machine the donor dollars, the case streeters, the lobbyists, all of it is disrupted. That in and of itself is a good thing because it would force the House of Representatives to give more power back to the members of the House. And that's a good thing for the American people where their members can actually play a role instead of taking a top-down approach in the committees. We, the people, need that. We, the people, deserve that. And the only way you get it is throwing out Kevin McCarthy. Three members have said there's no way they'll vote for him. He can only lose five right now. We need many more to stand up. Kevin McCarthy needs to go. The patronage would collapse with him. And that disruption would be a very good thing for Washington Disrupting the status quo of Washington, D.C. is something, regardless of party, all of us should want. And the way to do that is to toss McCarthy. The holidays are the most exciting time of the year, and if you want to enjoy them to the fullest, you need to get the best night's sleep ever, which is why you should be sleeping under Bolin Branch sheets. They're made of the finest 100% organic cotton threads on earth. And I got to tell you, I was on my front porch the other night. I'm just going to go off the script they gave me and tell you, uh, I convinced a friend of mine through this ad you're hearing right now to buy them. And he said he and his wife got them, and she couldn't believe he paid for Bolin Branch sheets. They're not that expensive. He took advantage of the deal, but she's like, oh, sheets like this, they must be super expensive. They're not. And then she was like, really? That was after the first wash. Now they've had them for two years, and he says they are the softest sheets ever. Every wash, they get softer and softer. I'm telling you, he's a believer. And now his wife's like, can't we buy Bowling Branch for every bed in the house? And he's like, we can. And they're going to because they're the best sheets. So here now with Christmas, it's time to take advantage of this incredible deal. 25% off site-wide plus free shipping when you use the promo code ERIC, E-R-I-C-K, at BolinBranch.com. That's BolinBranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. Promo code ERIC, offer ends December 4th. Like my friend, who's a preacher, yes, they get softer every wash. They're the best sheets you will own. BolinBranch.com, promo code ERIC, offer ends December 4th. 
Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here nationwide. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Let's go to Glenn up first today. Welcome, Glenn. How are you? I'm doing fine. Hey, I, I went to a Herschel Walker event Monday night. It was only 12 minutes from my house, so I had to go. But I just wanted to say to people that are reluctant to vote for him, if you had gone and listened to him, you would you would want to vote for him. He was smooth. I know it's probably a talk he's given. He didn't stutter. He didn't stop. He didn't stammer. And he was damn funny to tell you the truth and all everybody there all the demographics were connecting with him and then he stayed it, it wasn't a huge crowd but it was it, but he stayed and he uh he, he talked to everybody that he met with everybody that wanted to meet with him but if you go there he's very funny i would encourage you and he said uh hey if you got 10 if you haven't voted take 10 friends and if you hadn't got 10 friends go make them and then go vote so i just encourage everybody to, to go out and and support him and uh, I'm sorry to say you may not have time to listen to him talk, but if, if you can take somebody's word for it, if you listen to him, you'd want to vote for him. Uh, he, and he contrasted himself against Warnock very well. Good. I, so, I'm, uh, I'm glad he did. Uh, I'm I'm sad that the crowd sizes aren't big, but I will tell you Republicans behind the scenes are just trying to get people to turn out to vote for him. They're trying to get uh, the, the, the Kemp machine fired up. Just So those of you nationwide – understand this you know Brian Kemp actually did a a much better job than Stacey Abrams of building a ground game in Georgia and in building his ground game he left it and has given it over to the Senate leadership fund uh, Mitch McConnell um what is it um whatever, SLC whatever it is um that McConnell runs Senate leadership committee and they are trying to turn out all of Kemp's voters to vote for Walker. We got door knockers at our house in the runoff we never got during the general. I cast my absentee ballot the other day. Um, you you got you to gotta be able to engage. You've got to be willing to engage because it's tied in the Senate committees right now. And if Warnock wins, the Democrats are up 51 seats, which means they get a majority of the committee seats. And – Joe Biden's team is floating Stacey Abrams' name for the FCC. They want to put her in a position of power in Washington that could control television and radio and the Internet. That's not a good thing. They have openly floated her name. If you want to stop Stacey Abrams completely, you need to tie up the Senate committees. And the only way to tie up the Senate committees to be able to block even nomination. Because remember, there's no filibuster now for nominations. So if they get a majority in the Senate, they can push anybody through. But if you tie the committees, it becomes harder. And it's easier for Republicans to block. And we need to block Stacey Abrams from getting on the FCC. And the only way to do that is to beat Raphael Warnock. You may not like to go vote for Herschel Walker. But you got to send him to the Senate to stop Stacey Abrams again and to stop Joe Biden's agenda and to tie up the Senate and to tie Chuck Schumer knots. The committees being tied is a powerful weapon. Those of you who are libertarians who voted for the third party, Rand Paul was here two weeks ago. And he said, if you want to have his back because he has your back. You need to go vote for Herschel Walker because that puts him on a tied committee as the ranking Republican. It gives him way more power than if he were in the minority by being on a tied committee. It makes him more powerful and more able to block bad legislation. So if you have any doubts in Georgia, wherever you're listening, that's why you need to support Herschel Walker. You need to get out. You need to go vote for him. The runoff is December 6th. You can go vote today or tomorrow. I think tomorrow is the last day of early voting for the runoff. They don't do it the weekend before the election, and this will be the weekend before the election. Um, So you need to go vote today or tomorrow or Tuesday. You need to go for Herschel Walker. Crowds have actually been ginormous. Crowds have been record-breaking. I don't know what that means. I don't know who's turning them out because Kemp certainly turns people out, but Warnock has his own machine turning people out. I want to tell you guys a little about a group I've been working with, Americans for Prosperity. Maybe you've heard of them. They're the largest grassroots network in the country fighting to expand freedom and opportunity so that we can unleash prosperity in America again. 
Here's what I like about Americans for Prosperity. They focus on building movements at the community level, not Washington, D.C. That's actually how I first came to know them, in Georgia, helping rise up the Tea Party movement in 2010. They understand we're not going to find solutions in Washington. we got to take power out of Washington. That's going to have to come from Americans like you outside the Beltway bubble. That's why I'm excited to partner with Americans for Prosperity to provide an effective platform where we can talk to our fellow Americans and advocate for solutions to the most critical challenges facing the country. I encourage you to learn more about Americans for Prosperity by going to americansforprosperity.org slash Eric. Hi there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877 877- Nine seven three seven four two five. Should you wish to be on this here program? Now, speaking of phones, I will go to a phone call. Mark, you're going to be up next on the show. If I can push the button, there you go. Mark, how are you? Mark. Yes, I'm here. How are you? Yes, I can hear you now. Welcome. I'm good. Enjoy your show, but. I'm a little confused about some of these political commercials I see about the Senate race because it seems like all I ever hear is one person talking about the other person and how that how bad they are and how bad the other one is. Nobody ever it, – maybe I've not seen all the commercials, but it seems as though nobody ever states how they'll vote when they get to the Senate. All they say is they're going to be for the people, good for the people, but I don't know how they're going to vote. Well, so how, I, I gotta, how would you find that out? Mark, I, Are they scared to say that? No. Um, so I first of all, I got to tell you, my my thirteen year old son, uh, he doesn't watch a lot of TV. He watches uh, YouTube videos on Minecraft and and strategies for video <laughs> games and stuff. And, and the yeah. stupid ads come on there too, particularly the Warnock ads. Uh, but the anti Warnock ads since two thousand twenty one in the runoff. My 13-year-old will not refer to Senator Warnock as anything other than radical Raphael Warnock. <laughs> that's what all the ads I, said. <laughs> I, think of, I think of him now as Mr. Rogers. Yeah. With his sweater, sitting at the dinner Sweaters. table with his family, got his puppy dog. With, with the neighbor's but dog, I know yeah. He's so, yeah it, it's remarkable but, but that it, he hadn't that, even gotten flack for that not being his dog. <laughs> It just it just seems like I'd hear him like to hear one of his commercials say, "I support abortion, I support open borders, I support uh, higher taxes," but you never hear that. All you hear is yeah, and, and you know, know listen. Uh, so I, I gotta say, and, and and Mark, look, and I appreciate the phone call. Let me let me say on okay. on this front that um, the the issue here with Warnock and with Walker is that neither of them want to take an issue or take a position because they want to be generic D, generic R. Warnock wants to be likable D. Walker wants to be generic Republican. You get generic Republican, you get tied committees, you're able to obstruct people like Stacey Abrams being nominated to the FCC, you're able to slow down the legislative flow in the Senate, you're able to do all these things you can't without tied committees, even though the Democrats technically would have a majority because it's 50-50, Kamala Harris breaks the tie. For now. Um, Also, the other reason to vote for Walker is because it it gives you a cushion. If you're 50-50, you've got a better chance in 2024 of ensuring the Republicans have the majority because of the number of seats that are at play of states where Donald Trump won, like Montana, West Virginia will be in play in 2024, and Donald Trump won those states, even though the Democrats hold them in the Senate. So that matters a lot as well. It pads your margin. There are lots of reasons to vote for him. The problem is neither side wants to tell you what they actually stand for because they're afraid of turning off voters. Warnock will not come out and tell you he's he's in favor of the federal government paying for transgender surgeries for minors. The Biden administration is today announcing they intend to allow uh, families on government health care to pay for the transition surgeries of minors with your tax dollars. Warnock supports it, but he won't come out and admit it. Warnock cares about the border right now, uh, but only because it's a big issue in Georgia. The moment he wins, he's not going to care about the border anymore. So he can't really be honest with Georgia voters because here's the thing. The exit polling in Georgia for the general election showed that overwhelmingly voters, even Republican voters, thought Warnock was more stable, was more likable, but also more extreme. So Warnock has to downplay his positions because his positions are actually out of step with Georgia voters. Walker 
comes across as less trustworthy. He comes across as less respected or respectable. But he also comes across as in step with the voting positions of most of the people of Georgia. So it is a very difficult dance for both of them. 877-973-7425. Speaker of the border, Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary. Listen to this. This is a lie. Uh, Kevin McCarthy says that he invited President Biden down to the border. How does the president RSVP? <laughs> <laughs> to- well, we, know, we know the president's never been down to the border. The possible next speaker says that he wants him to go with him, so is he going to? So, look, uh, he's been there. He's been to the border. Uh, and since he took office... When, when did he go to the border? Uh, since he took office, the President Biden has been taking action to fix our immigration system and secure our border. And that's why on day one, he put forward an immigration uh, immigration reform, a piece of legislation uh, to deal with uh, what is currently happening at the border. Uh, but, you know, that we're not seeing that from Republicans. We're not seeing a willingness to work with us. Lies. Lies. He has not been to the border. Lies. Where's the fact checkers? Where's the fact checking? CNN is going through a a mass layoff right now. The news broke earlier while I was on air. Uh, Headline news, HLN is being gutted, which is not surprising. This is from Variety. HLN, the cable network once known as CNN Headline News, is home to a bevy of true crime series, endless showings of forensic files and Morning Express with Robin Mead with a host who has been at the network since 2001. Now, all of that is under the microscope. In addition, a number of popular correspondents and journalists were terminated from the Warner Brothers Discovery-backed outlet Thursday. CNN will no longer produce live programs for HLN, according to one of these people, and will simulcast CNN this morning in place of Morning Express, the AM news program that takes up most of HLN's daytime schedule. HLN's true crime programming will be placed under the aegis of Warner Brothers Discovery executive Kathleen Finch and made more a part of the operations of the company's ID cable network. CNN executives were expected to inform staffers about layoffs at the network Thursday morning. According to these people, CNN correspondents Allison Kosick, Martin Savage, Alex Field, Marianne Fox, and Chris Saliza are among the staffers who have been let go, according to people familiar with the matter. They should let go of the fact checkers because the fact checkers aren't fact checking anybody in the Biden administration. They can rehire them when a Republican gets back in the White House because they really aren't uh, doing so much in the matter of fact checking right now. Um, wow. It, it's not surprising that Saliz is being let go. It's not surprising that they're winding down HLN. It is kind of surprising that they're not getting rid of the Daniel Dales and the fact checkers that they hired to staff up Trump when they're not having a ton of those people on to fact check Joe Biden. Jake Tapper's like fact check island of himself on CNN these days. He's one of the only ones who asks tough questions. You know, Sam Bankman fried he's not going to sit down with Jake Tapper, is he? Tapper would ask him. You know, Tapper is one of those people at CNN who would be outraged on behalf of the people that Sam Bankman fried took advantage of. You listen to these interviews. He's laughing with George Stephanopoulos awkwardly and stuff. The damage control mode of this stuff. First of all, where are the kids' lawyers? He doesn't have any, I guess. His parents are, are uh, law school professors. But when you have the media doing that, it's no wonder CNN is having to wind things down. They should have actually left Robin Mead and, and uh, Morning Express and gotten rid of the, the uh, what's his name, Don Lemon morning show on CNN. But I'm just, I'm kind of stunned with, with the whole mess here 
on how the media can't do its fact checking job. The media can't can't fact check, and when they do try to fact check, it's always a bias against Republicans. Uh, Newsbusters has a story out about the fact checking in Georgia between Walker and Warnock. The media has largely fact checked constantly any claim. Herschel Walker has made and ignored pretty much every claim War, uh, Raphael Warnock has made. They're just not willing to engage in a serious fact check operation of Raphael Warnock. I'm not surprised, mind you. I, I'm, I'm really not surprised. But it is really, it continues to be a damning indictment. All of these things together with the media are just indictments of the media. And look at Corrine Jean Pierre who says the president has gone to the border, says it to Peter Ducey. And no fact checkers are out there saying, hey, actually, neither Joe Biden nor Kamala Harris have been to the American border. They keep giving them a pass on this. And here's the other. This is the other Corrine Jean-Pierre statement. Listen to this. And so now what we're seeing, and you've heard us talk about this, is we're seeing an economy uh, that's going into a transition to more stable and steady growth. Uh, so we do not foresee uh, a, a uh, recession. The data that I just laid out that we have seen the last couple months uh, does not show uh, a recession. The data doesn't show a recession. We're in a transition. Where have I heard that before? Shouldn't the fact checkers be calling that out too? We're transitioning. Uh, inflation was transitory. Remember that? Inflation was transitory in the first couple of months of the Biden administration and it stuck around and kept getting worse and worse. We're so screwed. No one in the media wants to hold these people accountable. It's my job, I guess, to point out the inconsistencies because the rest of the media doesn't want. i got to embrace the church of the painful truth. And the painful truth is that so much of our media is giving all of these people a pass and unwilling to ask the tough questions and take the firm lines. Cynthia Loomis, Republican congresswoman, was on with Maria Bartiromo this morning. She's one member of Congress who, if the GOP, well, when they take back control of the Congress, might ask tough questions of FTX and what went on. uh, Listen to this. Uh, Senator, I want to move on to crypto. You've been working so diligently on potential... Uh, My apologies. I I said Congresswoman. She's, She's Senator. Legislation. I want to talk about that. Disgraced FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed claims that he did not try to commit fraud. He's embarrassed by his mistakes, but he messed up, he said during the New York Times Dealbook Summit yesterday. Here's a bit of that watch. I also, frankly, made a mistake that I feel pretty embarrassed to have made. Um, I mean, a lot of these are, but I substantially underestimated what the scale of a market crash could look like and what the speed of it could look like. So billions of dollars have gone missing. What do you think happened? How did this happen? Well, I think that these were well-educated, sophisticated fraudsters. Uh, I think it's obviously fraud. Uh, So the Justice Department needs to get involved. Uh, There's a reason that uh, they offshored uh, most of these companies, 135 companies, uh, in a sophisticated uh, process. mess of businesses designed to obfuscate what they were doing. And what they were doing was rehypothecating, meaning lending over and over the same monies uh, and then using customer funds uh, to do their equity investing and their uh, political contributions. This was just pure and simple, good old-fashioned fraud. And uh, it needs to be handled through the criminal procedures. Thank you, Senator Loomis, Cynthia Loomis. Um, thank you very much for being able to call that as it is. She's the senator, junior senator from Wyoming. It is fraud. He needs to be prosecuted. And I hope the prosecutors use these softball interviews. They should use these softball interviews against him. His trying to build up a defense through the American media of naivete given his claims of what he said. I mean, there's clear fraud there. I mean, he basically said he said he was good at ferreting out fraud, uh, but he wasn't doing his job. I'm telling you, this this willful, the media played accomplices with Sam Bankman Freed to try to help him build his defense for I just wasn't that bright. 
when it was glorified, pure fraud that happened. Why won't the media show the outrage against this guy where they would against a Republican who didn't take a strong enough stance against Trump? Folks, I want to take a strong stand for you on the Eden Pure Thunderstorm because it eliminates odors, and I travel with one in my suitcase. I didn't this time, actually, because I I, I, I packed a light travel bag this time and didn't even put it in, but I didn't have to because the hotel I was at is fine. But normally, when I travel, I keep the Eden Pure Thunderstorm with me because it wipes out odors. I don't use it as an air purifier. I, I really don't, um, and, and I know it's it's called an air purifier, and it does. It's got electrostatic plates. It traps the mildew, the mold, the pollen, the dust, all of that stuff, and you don't have to have a filter. But let me just tell you how I use it and why I use it. If someone's been smoking in a rental car, and this happens all the time these days, people smoke in rental cars they're not supposed to. It's hard to get rid of the odor. This thing, you plug it in with a USB cord in the car, turn on the car, plug it into a USB outlet, fire it up, let it run for a little while. It wipes out the odors. If I get to a hotel room in the hotel room, someone's been smoking in a hotel room. This happens so much these days. You just fire the thing up and it works. It wipes out the odors, litter box odors, pet odors, smoke odors. I blew cigar smoke accidentally into my car on the golf course a couple of weeks ago. My car smelled like cigar smoke. My wife complained. I plugged in the Eden Pure Thunderstorm, turned it on, walked away, came back. It took care of the odors. It does. The Eden Pure Thunderstorm, you get three of them for less than $200 at EdenPureDeals.com. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is Eric3. When you go to EdenPureDeals.com, you'll see on the front page of the site a discount code box. You put in Eric3, E-R-I-C-K-3. You can order three of them for less than $200, one for upstairs, one for downstairs, one for your RV, your basement, your suitcase like I do. And you get free shipping for less than 200 bucks at EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is Eric, E-R-I-C-K, and the number three. This hour of the program brought to you by First Liberty, building and loan wherever you are nationwide. If you're in charge of the finances from a business and you want to grow, reach out to them. Tell them I sent you. FirstLibertyGA.com. Ray, you're going to be up next. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing well. I wanted to say that when you listen to these interviews with Sam Bankman Fried, you notice he uses the same immature, halting speech patterns that Christine Blasey Ford used in the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. Oh, He's trying to manipulate the audience with an immature, childlike appearance, and so far it's been effective. That's a really good point. Ray, I am disappointed in myself for not having thought of that, but I'm glad you did and were able to call in and share because you're right. It, it really is a a very simple word, soft-spoken pattern where, where poor him, he's trying to sound the victim just as she did, um, it, making stuff up along the way. Ray, thank you for that. That's such a good point. I mean, he really does sound like, poor me, I'm the victim here. No, the real victims are the people who lost all their money. It's like there's a, a I, I, don't, I won't go into details because I know I have friends of friends and don't want to put them in an awkward position, but there's a pastor who kind of fell from grace and four of his friends who are pastors have essentially said after a um, sexual harassment issue that he is now all well and good to come back into the ministry now and uh, that that he, he's been victimized by people. And, and Bart Barber, who is the chairman of the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, said, actually, um, the, the victim here was a woman who was inappropriately um, placed in positions with this guy, and we shouldn't forget her, and good for him for taking that stand. I, I just, I got to tell you— um, The rush of old men pastors to defend their friends, and I'm trying to be nice here, and and I don't want to be insulting to people, but come on, dudes, do better here. Uh, This isn't your little country club click. Uh, This is the body of Christ you're dealing with. you got to tread carefully. All right, when we come back, we'll move on. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. 
That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.